for joining us today for another episode of What's Your Why Wednesday. Today, I am joined by the wonderful Jamie Frampton. She is the COO at Mortgage Team One. Jamie, thank you so much for joining us today, and we're going to dive right in. Most of us came into our industry by accident, but we stay in the industry because it's tied to our personal and professional why. Jamie, please share with us, what's your why? First, Laura, thank you for having me on today. You know, I think my why has changed over the years. Originally, when I got into the business, my why was just for drive and success. As I have worked in this industry and met many new people, I believe my why and my drive no longer is for success, but is just simply to help others and to find new ways to help others when people have told them no, because so many people in our industry are either told no, because whoever they've gone to, they have only one provider that they can seek mortgages from, or this person may not be knowledgeable in all areas or willing to or have the ability to go out and seek other options. So I try to find and seek out those options any way I possibly can, almost like an Easter egg hunt. Isn't that exciting, right? Isn't that like so, um, you know, of course it's problem solving and it's so exciting to be able to fit that puzzle piece right into that yes. puzzle and and I agree with you you know I think we you know we all have our story of how we came in and at first sure it was you know it was having a job and building a career and moving along but then you get to know these families and you get to hear their stories and why they want to purchase this home or the help that they need for that refinance or the cash out or whatever their situation is. And that actually leads me to my next question, my most favorite question. So throughout our careers, we do meet so many fabulous families, but there's always those few families that always stay in our memory, regardless of how many years ago that we met them. And I'd love to hear one story from you of where there was a family that you realized how much impact that you had on their lives. There is one family and I worked with this one client for over three years. Wow. When she first came to me, the colleagues that I was talking in the industry about her with were asking me why I was wasting my time. She had an I-10 number, no credit. She had no citizenship. Wow. She really did not have anything but illegal status here and a job for cash. And she came to me through a referral from one of my very good realtors and the realtor and I both really saw that this person, one, wanted to do things right, wanted to find people that would help her, one, find a path to citizenship. She felt like she had a real reason and a real desire and reason that she could find it. And she was right. We listened to her and it, it was lots of hours of listening and then going and researching and trying to find the right attorneys for her to find citizenship that would work with her to listen to her story and we finally did find a very good attorney the real estate agent and I that not only helped her but lots of her friends and now we have a little group of people that we are working with that will be future homeowners but that process took a year and then once her citizenship was established, she started working on building her credit and she started working at the whole time she had been working. She converted over to begin working with her social security number, which that was established and everything. Credit was spotty in the beginning because she went through the COVID and everything with losing working hours. So she really had every obstacle she could come across. Her employer was willing to, knowing what was going on, we talked to him and, and told him, look, this lady, if you can help her with full-time employment and really 
help her, she will stay working for you. She will be a better employee because she's a homeowner. She will bring her family and friends to also work for you and they will be better employees than what you've had in the past. And so this employer believed us and took her on full time. The underwriters and everybody believed the entire story of everything we had done and what we had gone through. And she closed this past, I believe it was January on her Mm -hmm. home. And it was the most rewarding closing I think I've ever had. And it just, it filled me. There's no other words for it. It just filled my soul to every part of it. Wow. And I I have a follow-up question to that. So what's your recommendation to our other mortgage professionals out there? Because Listen, I've heard so many of those beautiful stories, life-changing, miracle-making stories, right? I mean, that's, that's what that was, right? So what's your recommendation to our other mortgage professionals out there? How do, you, how do you handle a situation? You know, maybe not the exact situation, but we've all been faced with families that maybe have had some difficulty, uh, difficult situations that have caused their credit to not be the best, or maybe right now, you know, things don't look perfect for them where they don't qualify, but many times we don't follow up with them, or we don't stay close to them, or we don't guide them, right? Guide them, listen, guide guide them. So what would be your recommendation, Jamie? You know, it's to take that time with that client that doesn't qualify, doesn't fit the mold, and doesn't fit the box today. Some of my biggest referrals highest dollar income producing loans I've closed in the last two or three years have been from the clients either I never closed or I closed and made the least money on they were referrals from because I did take that time when no one else would and a lot of people think it is time wasting some of the things that I do whether it is spending three or four hours at night when I'm watching TV working on someone's credit to see how to fix it instead of just sending them to a credit repair company or investing the time in searching out the right attorney for a customer instead of just giving them an attorney or the right real estate agent that's going to spend those extra hours helping that client that has either the language barrier or in this instance, the citizenship barrier was willing to work with them when they weren't legal until they could become legal. There are lots of instances where things and people, it's not their fault they're not in a legal situation because it's either their parents doing or their spouse is doing and they're in a community property state and they just have to deal with it. So there are so many situations where people, yes, It is your responsibility, but sometimes it's not their fault. And we, so many people are judged for their situation and we just try to take the judgment out. And I feel like if you take the judgment out and you invest the time, those are the people that are going to, you're going to get tenfold more referrals from than the million dollar client that you're going to make money off of today. Once, once. Exactly, exactly. No, that's so true. And I, and I've heard that so many times, you know, those same things where, you know, they did a loan for free, but then they referred, you know, 10 of their, their family members or their network to them, right. Mm -hmm. Or something like this, where now they're spreading your name all across their community, right. And saying, this is, this is the girl go over here. You know, that's, who's going to take the time. So you're right. You have to be willing to sometimes plant those seeds. Not everything is ripe for the picking immediately. Sometimes you gotta let the seeds grow, right? So honestly, the way I look at it, and I'll, I'll get your opinion too, but don't you think it should almost be a balance? You should always be picking, picking what's ripe right now that needs to happen, but also planting seeds as a combination oh, yeah. in your business, right? Because we can't, we, we want to have the future, plus we need the now. So it should be yes. a balance with that. Awesome. You know, that's what I talk, we teach, our, or I teach a lot of new real estate agent classes. And that is one of the things that we talk about is that as a new realtor, you're going to get a lot of the lower 
approval, lower ability approval clients. I don't know why it happens that way, but that is what happens when you're newer. Those are not people you should be sad about. Those are people right. that you should keep and constantly feed into future buyers. Those are all of your future buyers. Those are not wasted time today. And anytime we have a slow down, slow down in our industry, everyone goes into panic mode. I go into celebration mode because that's when you are planting all those seeds. You have time to plant again instead of making time to plant. And when we do get those clients that don't qualify today, that is my opinion is God providing a path when you are too busy to immediately plant. Agree. So. Agree. A hundred percent. And that is what it's all about for longevity, right? For anyone that's been in our industry for a long time, we know the seasons change, right? Yes. There's going to be harvest season and there's going to be a dry season. There's going to be a rainy season, right? I mean, these seasons yes. all change and you can't have the same season forever. It's going to change. It's going to shift. So to your point, we should celebrate all of the seasons because those seasons allow us the harvest in the future at all times. Correct. Love it. All right. So now what I'd like to know as we wrap up is, all right, I want to know how do you want to be known in the mortgage industry? So I'll give you an example. If someone was going to describe you, if you were not in the room, what would they say? Right now, they probably say I fix it. <laughs> <laughs> um, and that I work too many hours. I want to change part of that. I don't want to be known as the one that's 24-7. I want that changed. Um, I don't mind being known as the fixer. I really don't mind that. Um, I want to be known as the helper, the one that helped no matter what the call was for. That's really what I'd like to be known for. So whether that. you're calling for a moving truck recommendation or the next best mortgage, mortgage product, that's what I want to be known for. You know, it's, for all. it's funny. I was reading an article about the most successful people in whatever industry, right? And one of the things that they said is one of the most important skills we can have is being a connector. So what you just said about the referral for the moving truck or the, the greatest loan program currently happening, you're connecting. You're connecting people together. You're yes. connecting information together. So yes, you are a helpful connector. So that's what we'll go with, right? You're I like it. You're a helpful connector. That's a great fixer. Love <laughs> so it. We'll all that. That's it. I That's love the description. It. Awesome. Love well, Jamie, we appreciate you sharing your insights and sharing your why with all of us. Continue to keep being a, a life-changing miracle maker out there because the world needs you. Thank, Thank you, you so, so much. Bye-bye.